Hey, thanks, Scott. Um, so at this time, I think we're going to switch to uh, to Q and A. Um, we have a few questions that are um, uh, that have come through the chat. I've been answering them as we go. Um, but at this time, I encourage you to uh, throw whatever uh, questions that you have. That could be to related to the two topics that we have here, or or anything. You've got the majority of the product marketing organization on this call. So um, uh, happy to answer any other question that you might have. And uh, before we dive in, we've got about um, we've got about 10 minutes here. I, before you, uh, you disappear from the call, I would be interested in any feedback that you have for these sessions. We've been running these now for about six months. Um, perhaps a poll question would have been better at this time. But if you've got any feedback in terms of the things that you uh, are hearing and things that might be missing or anything like that, please also put that in as a comment into the chat and we'll sift through and, uh, and find those. We'd really appreciate that feedback. Um, so uh, first question here is from, um, from Michael. It's an OfficeLink question. Reg regarding OfficeLink, um, the idea here is that he's, he, that he's presenting, he's got, uh, if it's an auto deal or the reception transfers a call to a group of sales reps, first one to answer wins the lead, how, is there a limit? to how many OfficeLink um, mobile users can be in a group. Um, I'm not sure the answer. I'm sure there is a limit, um, but for a, uh, a company like a dealership with a sales group, I wouldn't expect that the sales group to be um, above the limit. So I'm thinking that uh, the limit's well above kind of our average number of users. So theoretically, for a small company, like a 16-user company, you could put uh, the uh, entire uh, company in a group. Um, but I will uh, uh, find that out for you, Michael, and uh, we'll get an answer back to you one way or the other. Perhaps, perhaps if you could, uh, well, we have your email address, so we'll, we'll get an answer directly back to you on that one. Uh, Tom, then there's a series of 14.2 questions. So um, Kurt and, and Steve, if you could help us out here. Um, can yeah. a customer revert back to 14.2 after going to connect? Um, there's a particular customer that they have where their soft phone headsets on, uh, work on connect but don't on 14.2 and apparently we have no fix. Um, thoughts? So technically speaking, it certainly is possible. I would be more interested in solving the soft phone headset problem, and I know that there have been some planned enhancements made in the desktop client. Specifically, I'd love to take the details offline, understand which headset vendor, what particular issues. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you certainly, if you follow all the steps uh, properly, would have the ability, uh, should it become necessary, to revert back to 14.2. So Kurt, that one's from Tom Healy uh, when you get the output, H-E-A-L-Y. Um, right, okay, next one. Does the 18.04 on-site support full-width switches? And we had a few questions that are in, uh, along this theme. Yeah, and that I've seen go by. Uh, first off, Thank you very much for pointing out some inconsistency in the release notes for <laughs> release 1804. Uh, I will make sure those get addressed immediately because release 1804 does mark the software implementation of the end of life on the SG full width switches. What that means is if you have those particular full width switches, these are the SG40, SG60, SG120, SGT1, or SGE1 products in the system. Release 1804 will not install. We've been forecasting for, again, since January 2017 that December 31st, 2017, was the official end of life on those full width switches. We have not been renewing support on those assets effective January 1st of this year. And now 1804 is the release in which they have been officially removed. 
Uh, just a quick one, I spotted the full width SG24A. Notice I did not list. It is still fully supported. But the other question was, what about a program to get those replaced? Get those five full width switch models I rattled off a minute ago replaced with the new ST voice switches. I don't have a program to announce today. Uh, I, I will leave you with there's a lot of activity underway as I'm speaking to lead to an announcement shortly, but we do realize there is a requirement to get those customers moved on to the latest hardware and we're working to get all the details in place and we'll share them with you as soon as they are available. All right, thanks, Kirk. Um, so I think we covered a few there. Um, I think you covered the release notes one here from Joel and the one from James. Um, and I'm not seeing any other 14.2 related ones unless you know of them. Do you see any that I missed, Kurt? Or Steve? Uh, I, I believe I touched on all the ones I saw go by. Yep, okay. So uh, next one from Jackson. Will a new mic lab be released soon with uh, MBG 10.1 release or event version mismatch? Uh, we do have a, uh, a mic lab release in the works. Um, you can expect that one uh, somewhere in the sort of the latter part of Q3. Um, uh, okay, um, any time frame on 6900 series phones supporting with MyCloud Connect or MyVoice Connect? So we do have a project working on this. I think that's not a, a, a secret. Um, uh, at this point in time, uh, we, we don't see that um, uh, sort of imminent in the next sort of couple of months, but we do expect that that will be available on MyCloud Connect before the end of the year. Um, so I think kind of 4 4Q-ish, that sort of time frame, and we certainly will be talking about that in future calls, um, likely uh, towards the end of 3Q. Um, and on my voice connect, uh, certainly there is intention for that as well, um, but that will be a 2019 item. Uh, when will the 6900 phones work, work with legacy short tail products? So I think I covered that just then. Um, any other questions that... Um, that you have. Okay, um, just looking back on the stream here, not seeing any more coming in. So please, as you leave, uh, just jot into the chat um, just some feedback for us, anything that you would like to see on these calls. Uh, our intention is to. Uh, uh, basically give you a, a month uh, looking forward in each one of these calls. So uh, release anything new and, and anything from kind of the product area of the house within these calls. Um, but if there's uh, interesting to get any sort of feedback on um, the demo we, had tr we tried to uh, present today um, and any, any other sort of forms, content that you'd like to see. Um, uh, let's see, James, I guess he's saying, I guess I'm still confused on how we'll get around this. This is um, uh, uh, back to um, to uh, Kurt in terms of, uh, let's see, hold on, going back to the yeah, third I'm, question. Paul, I'm, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's the SG full width switch issue. Yep. And uh, until there is a program in place formally, we have already had partners request and territory account managers approve special pricing for ST switches specifically intended to replace SG full width switches. I never like to encourage the use of SPAs. They are extra overhead for everyone, yourselves included. But until I have that program in place, to formally give you a mechanism to replace the SG full width switches, uh, yes, you can go ahead and put in 
spa request for discounting on the ST switches as you sell them to your 14.2 customer in advance of their migration to My Voice Connect. Okay. Um, all right, a couple more questions here. Sorry, just uh, missed a couple uh, that came in late here. Um, so this one's for you, Patrick. Uh, Catherine, e e now, which interest group do you need to belong to on InfoChannel to get invites to product webinars like this? So uh, don't necessarily need to be a member of an interest group, but Patrick, I assume that any person that shows up on one of these uh, webinars becomes a invitee to future ones. Would that be correct? Correct. And if you have um, any other email addresses that are missing from our distribution list, anyone on your team who isn't getting the newsletters or these invites, um, just send an email to me, patrick.avila at mytel.com, or to uh, channelcoms at mytel.com, and I'll make sure that you guys um, get added to our distribution list. Okay, another one from Catherine about an update on Contact Center for the Connect platform. Uh, again, um, uh, the, the, it is a platform that we continue to develop on. Uh, there will be announcements coming in the future. Uh, Catherine, I will um, uh, uh, take the time to uh, to just get an idea of the next, uh, just timing of the next one and get you a note back directly. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Um, let's just we're over the top of the hour, so I think what we'll do now is if you have any further questions, then you can uh, hit me up, paul.ginn at mitel.com, or uh, feel free to join the next uh, webinar and, um, and ask it there. So I appreciate your attention, and back to you, Patrick. All right, thanks, Paul, and thanks to all of our presenters today. Um, just a reminder, this session was recorded. Um, so we will be sending out a copy of the recording as well as a PDF uh, copy of the presentation. Um, so be sure to look for that in your inbox later today. Um, so I think with that, we had everything covered, and we will see all of you on the next session. Uh, thank you for joining, and see you guys later.